Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Travis Pfeiffer here, bringing you a Deck Tech Talk. Today I wanted to hit something that uh, definitely got a big splash in Opus 11, but, you know, it's still kind of fun and relevant to play, and that's Monks. And what are Monks? Monks are Ursula, basically. So, Monks got one new Monk in Opus 12 that is very good and has helped the deck a lot, but I just wanted to kind of talk about my version of it, because I, I just enjoy Tribals in general, and they're really fun. And this was actually a deck and a card I wasn't sold on at all, when I first saw it, and then when I played it, I was like, this is actually pretty fun to play. Um, I've seen some different versions of it, so this is just kind of my version of it that I wanted to use. Uh, let's see. So, Ursula, you know, her main thing is that she can take a job. When she enters the field, she's going to bring a job monk, or card named monk, of cost two or less, put it back right onto the field, and then she can at any time, as an action ability, take a card or job named monk, put it in the break zone, and either give herself 4,000 power and brave, or deal her power uh, as damage to your opponent's forwards. Which, that's the key part of her. And that's really what we want to build around and what this deck is centered around. It is very costly to have to use two monks to, you know, she's only got 5k on her own. So if you use one monk to buffer up 4k brave, and then use another monk to attack something... Sure, you removed a four, but that, that's very costly. That's two cards, you know, backups or forwards that you've taken off your field just to get rid of one person. So the idea behind this deck is that you want to just buff Ursula up naturally. You want to get her power strong enough that you can use a single monk to take out a forward. You really don't want to have to be using two. So here are the monks we're going to be working with. Um, if you're playing Ursula, you basically got to play some version of Yang. I've seen some of the other Yangs. There's the one that, like, gives a monk the ability to deal damage when it attacks. I just find the tempo that this one gives is incredible. When he plays, comes down to the field, you get to play a card named Ursula for free, especially as a four cost, like you're paying four to get another four and then Ursula's gonna bring back a two. I have plenty of times, turn one, you know, I'll pitch something like one of these monks and then pitch this monk, pitch something else, play the Yang into the Ursula, get the monk on the field. So turn one, you've got two forwards and a backup on the field. That feels great. Uh, plus, this Yang's also going to get a thousand and brave if you control card named Ursula, so he's nothing to sneeze at on his own. I'll be honest, I've never used Kick. Um, I like that move in the game a lot, but I've just never used this version of it because usually I'm just doing other things, but it is there if you need it. So, we've got three copies of this special monk. Uh, this is my buddy Brandon's favorite monk. You can tap him, pay an Earth, and then put him in the break zone, and basically he kind of acts like Ursula, and he'll deal 3,000 damage times however many monks you have on the field, which in this deck can get pretty darn big if you need to, so... Yeah, but otherwise, Ursula can just throw him at him. You've got two copies of this monk, two copies of this monk, two copies of this monk, and three copies of this brand new monk from Opus 12. So I'll talk about this one, because this one, when it enters the field, it's a recursion. You get to pull back any card name or job name monks from the break zone. Since Ursula is the deck, and she's basically what makes the deck work, um, you'll always want to use this to fish back copies of Ursula if you have to, or, you know, turn two if you put out one of these two costs, and then you curve out into this one, just get to pitch a monk and pull it right back. Never feels bad. And then this monk also basically has a Hecaton Kyre effect, um, or you know, Jimbo if you want to think, but there's no power buff, where you can basically make one of your forwards, they can fight each other with an opponent forward. I don't use that too often, because again, similar to this one, usually I'm using Ursula's effect, but again, if Ursula isn't on the field, if she's gotten destroyed or whatever, you know, it is a nice backup, because you're going to have some beefy forwards in this. So, again, if I have Ursula, I tend not to use any of these monk effects, but if you don't have her... They're kind of great. These other ones don't have great effects. Uh, this one, you can dull a forward to keep it from getting broken. That's worth it if, you know, uh, if like, Ursula is going to be in trouble. This one, you can give a forward 3k and brave until the end of the turn. Uh, this one, you can also break 3k brave, but it's only during your main phase. So, like, on occasion, yes, I will use these monk abilities, but for the most part, they're all here to help Ursula. To fill it out, she also has two of the forward monks helping her out, which is... Two versions of this one, two versions of this one. <laughs> I know it might seem weird to see a card with no text on it, you know. It's just a two-cost, 6k body. The reason that one is specifically in here is because um, I wanted to have a forward monk she could play when she entered the field. Because sometimes your backup line is just totally full or whatever, so it's kind of nice to have a forward one. Plus, there's an advantage of the forward monks that I really like. So this monk, too, you know, he's just an on-curve... 3 cost 7k, but he says, 
Dole an active card named Monk, and then he will gain a thousand power until the end of the turn. And that includes himself, so again, you can block someone with him and then dole him, and he'll bump up by a thousand. Or you can dole any backup to pump him by a thousand. And what's nice is because it says the word dole and not the dole symbol, that doesn't require haste. He can do that the moment he comes down. So the reason I like having some forward monks is because of Ursula's effect, in that I've had, you know, let's say I'll block with Yang. I'll have a, they'll have an 8k forward coming in, I'll be like, okay, well they probably got a trick, I'll block with Yang, and then they do their summon or their combat trick or whatever that's going to kill the Yang. And so then in response to that, since Yang is going to die anyway, I'll have or Ursula absorb him. You know, she'll basically, like, old modulators, when she'll power up, and either Ursula will buff up by four, which maybe helps save her, or I'll just throw Yang at them, you know. And then these monks are for the exact same purpose, is that they're these great blockers that you can block someone, and then on the block, if they're going to die anyway, you then absorb them with Ursula and either just throw them at them for her power, or, you know, you, you power her up to then... Because that doesn't feel as bad. Like, having to pitch two of these backups from your five backup line to power her up and then hit something, that doesn't feel good. But having a forward that's blocking, you're going to lose it anyway, and then using that to power her up and then only having to throw one from her backup line, that feels much better. So um, I found in testing that I do really like these guys, but I understand some people, especially one like this, oh, it's a card with blank text, so you could absolutely swap it out for something else if you want. So here's all our monks. Here's everything we can do. So how do we power her up? We need to get her to a strong enough power that... You know, she doesn't have to absorb two monks to threaten big-sized bodies. So we've got two copies of Enicro, great in any Earth deck. Everyone's going to get a thousand. Yang's going up to ten. He's suddenly going to become eight, and he can pump. And then Ursula's just six on her own. Okay, starting to get respectable, right? We have three copies of Ingus. Ingus is going to give another thousand all the Earth forward. So if we've got these two out, now she's up to seven. Plus, Ingus has the ability, you can dole a total of three Earth characters, combination of forward backups, and you choose a forward, and it gains 2,000 power till the end of the turn. Now, for the most part, I don't really use that, but there are some occasions I have found that useful, that I don't want to actually get rid of one of my monks, or let's say, you know, there's a few non-monk backups in here, and let's say I'm in one of those rare situations where I've got a lot of non-monks, so I don't actually have a monk to throw, so it's just a 2k buff, plus... It is great against lightning. Um, I've actually used this to dodge Bahamut Zero before, where, you know, they were trying to break Ursula, and I was like, well, Ingus effect, I'll just manually dull her, and now your Bahamut Zero fizzles. So, you know, can make an Alf Sid fizzle. That's great. Two copies of Wool. So when you enter combat phase, you can pick from one of his three effects. No choosing the expert is always great. Brave is nice, because again, you don't have to do that, and he can give her 2k. So, boom, if she's 6 within a crow, now she's up to 8, maybe with him she's 9. So you can see all these boosts she can get really easily. Plus, an often overlooked one of his effects is he can deal 3,000 damage to a dull forward. Well, normally that might not seem like a whole lot, but again, that can help with Ursula. If they've got a 9k that's dull, you can deal 3 with wool, and now you don't even need to pump her up. If she's just 6, boom, throw a monk. There, you just took out your 9k. So he's really great. To go with him is Kadaj. It's kind of funny, Kadaj has two of his effects in one on Kadaj. But again, 2k Brave. Just more ways to pump her up to get her so big you only need to throw a single monk per forward. And then Kadaj is just a sticky forward, EX burst, best dark forward in the game, card's ridiculous. What are you gonna do? Finally, uh, one copy of Gipple. <laughs> this card you could easily switch out, but I like it just because it's a, it's a burst. And I've had some matches where it's a surprise burst where, like, they're attacking, and I'm like, I don't really want to block, something seems fishy. Surprise Gipple burst. Oh, cool, right? Ursula's, you know, 9 or 10k now. Here, let me just go and throw a monk and kill your other guy. Like, that's nice. Or again, when anyone's on the field, you just drop him, brrr, power everybody up. Some more burst power ups. This is, uh, we're going to have the Titan Parade now. So, two copies of this Titan, power anything up by two, and then deal its power directly to forward, kill it. One of the best Earth bursts in the game. One copy of this Titan. He has a 1k power buff, which isn't huge, but, you know, it's there if you need it. But he can also let you draw a card. Um, he can give the whole field brave, which is nice. And on the occasion you're facing against ice, you can use it to prevent the field from getting dull. There's no copies of Matt in this deck. Um, I just don't really like Matt. Matt's great against ice because he says none of your monks can become dull by your opponent's summons or abilities. But other than that, I just don't like paying 6 CP to search out a card. Even though searching, you know, Ursula is good, so... This version doesn't run Matt. 
And then one cost, one version of this Titan. I like him just because one is a burst. He's incredibly cheap, one CP, and then for every Earth backup you control, you can have, make a Ford gain a thousand power. So if you've got all five of your Earth backups, one CP and Ursula's going up by five, now you can check something and she's, you know, 10K or beyond. Yeah, I really appreciate how cheap that is. <coughs> Excuse me. One copy of Graviton. When you cast any Earth Summon, including this Kusith here, which is just there to help your recursion, um, you can choose a Ford and it gets 2,000 power. Just more ways to get Ursula power. Or as a nice combat trick, you know, casting a Titan and there's a Graviton, you say, okay, I'll block with Ursula, Titan, her, she powers up, kills that forward, Graviton's going to bump her by two, now she's enough to get over this blocker. Just great ways to mess with combat math. And the final way is one of my favorite Earth Fords, and that's three copies of Seaguard. And Seacard himself, anytime he takes damage, will be reduced by 2,000, and any Earth Forward that takes damage will be reduced by 1,000. So you can see there's kind of all these ways to mess with, math, mess with math that, you know, if Ursula is 7K, and they attack with 7K and Seacard's on the field, she can safely block that, because she's only going to take 6,000 of that damage. So he's a really sticky forward, and he's a nice threat, because too, I've seen people, they'll ignore the Ursula to use the removal on him, because they know if they don't get Seacard off the field, they're never going to win in any combat. Three copies of Cecil, just a great, great Earth Forward. Nice EX Burst, you know, great removal on it all forward. Dart can also be very useful at times as well. You just can't go wrong with a, with a Cecil. Two copies of Suzuhiza. Uh, this deck really wants to draw cards. The more cards you draw, the more chance you have of getting your Monks, getting your other Ursulas, so he's just a great little forward. You can, and, and it's funny, in this deck, <laughs> I've had some turns where he somehow becomes a threat on his own, you know. And a crow's out, Ingus is out, there's some other power buff. It's like, oh, Suzu, he's a suddenly like a 5k on his own. Not that, you know, not that he's really ever going to be a threat, but just it's funny to see him get above 1k. Two copies of the Gigas. This card's a really, really fun monster. He's a bit pricey and he's an investment, but the fact that you can for free at any time turn him into a 9k blocker, or in this deck, he's almost always 10k or often higher, is just great. He combos well with Wool. You know, you can turn him into a, give him Brave, so that way he can attack. Because his downside is that if he attacks, he basically becomes frozen, and that he won't activate on the next turn. But if he has Brave, you don't have to worry about that. Unfortunately, he doesn't work with Kadaj, because Kadaj comes down at the end of the turn. But if he hadn't played Kadaj yet, then you could make him a forward, make Kadaj. And he's also nice, too, that if he's always sitting there on the side, sometimes I'll just leave him there as that blocking threat that, hey, Anytime you come in, there's this potential 10k blocker who's going to take reduced damage. What are you going to do? And it really makes your opponent pause. And again, sometimes, if I'm pretty confident they won't have a way to deal with him, <coughs> even if he's dull, like if he's been dull and he's not react, you can make him a forward before you take damage. And then if you hit Titan, you know, hey, now you've got a forward you can trigger for Titan. So that's really nice. Final summon is one copy of Mist Dragon. It's just a very nice defensive card. It's a way to dump out their break zone if, they've, if they're relying on it a lot. Um, the doll is really good. So yeah, just a nice kind of tech card. One copy of Kolka. Originally didn't really want to run this card, but I just had too many matches where I wouldn't draw Ursula. And this deck, and this is kind of my issue with Monks in general, is that this deck just doesn't really work as well without her. <laughs> I remember I had one game, I drew everything but Ursula, and I told the guy watching, I was like, I swear this is a Monk's deck. I, I know it doesn't look like it because I'm drawing everything but the Monk's, but I swear this is an actual Monk's deck. And finally, my new back favorite backup from Opus 12, one copy of White Mage. Uh, it's basically like Devout for Earth, but so you crack it and you can pull any four cost Earth forward and play it onto the field. So in this deck, the only thing it's not bringing back is Cecil and Kadaj. But you can do it on your opponent's turn. So again, you can, let's say you have an Ursula in hand, and they go to attack White Mage. You know, bring back Yang. Now that Ursula comes in for free in your hand, now comes this other monk. Or they think they've got combat figured out, and White Mage, oh, here comes Seaguard. Suddenly, you know, the, the power values they thought they were working with aren't relevant anymore. So that's my version of monks. It's really fun. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how consistent this concept will ever be because you're always having to lose people to take out your enemy forwards, which is the whole point of Ursula, but that's how it works right now. I like this version a lot. Again, I've seen people with versions where they don't lean into the monks so hard. I obviously lean very hard into the monks here, but I like having ammo for her. I think that's a really fun play style that you've got so much, you know, they've got Ursula and you've got four monk backups and they just know, man, he's got all these threats that, 
you can high noon, you know, if you absolutely had to, you can high noon saloon the place, and she's going down, all right, and, you know, take out the board with it. So that's my version. Let me know what you think. I will leave the deck link, deck link in the description below, and have a good day. Bye.